Okay, welcome to Envelopes Part 2. So basically, we can draw and design as simple or as complicated an envelope as we want. And, you know, we could put stuff after the sustain section if we want to. If I go on to Operator F here, we could draw a whole bunch more points in here in our release section. So this is actually what's happening when we release the note. You hear that when I take my finger off the note? So we have complete control to sculpt our sound. We've got a tempo sync button. And you'll see that when I click that, the numbers on our grid change from being time values and become beat values, fractions of a bar. So if we want to, we can create an envelope that loops with the tempo. And we can turn that off any time we want as well. This key scaling value, if we start to turn that up, will mean that the envelope plays faster the higher up the keyboard we go and slower the lower down the keyboard we go. And that differentiation gets more extreme the higher we put the key scaling value and it'll go up to 100. So when it's on 100, we, we play a low note. Play a high note, it's a lot quicker. We put it back down to zero, plays at the same rate, irrespective of where on the keyboard. Velocity scaling does a very similar thing with the velocity. So if I start to turn that up a bit, when I play the note more softly, it'll be slower. Or harder, it'll be faster. And you can actually scale that into negative values, so that it's faster when you play it softer. So that's velocity scaling and key scaling. If we want absolute precision, we can use these values down at the bottom. If we select the band we want by using these values, this BP number, then we can change its relative position. And, you know, we can even double click and type in a value if we want. We can specify its level and we can change its slope. It's just an alternative way to clicking and dragging, but it does afford you a bit more precision if you want to be really precise. If you click here where it says mode, it'll change from slide to fix. Now when it's on fix as opposed to slide, you can drag a point around without disturbing the points around it, which is really, really handy when you're on tempo sync mode. Because when it's on slide mode, you drag it around, it'll move all the points that are to the right of it, and that can mess up your timing. So when you're making a tempo synced envelope, definitely don't forget to change that mode to fix, otherwise you'll be really frustrated. So, quick recap of the basics. Anything in between the vertical red lines will loop because that's your sustain section. And you can control click anywhere or right click if you're using a mouse with a right click to add more points to your envelope. So if you want to, you can make some really complicated and really interesting envelopes. <laughs> But there's also a whole bunch of presets that you can call up at any time. Including looped ones.
The only slightly annoying thing about these envelope presets is unlike the presets for effects and arpeggiator that we looked at earlier, there isn't a whole bunch of blank user presets for us to save onto. We can still save our presets by typing a name and then hitting the save button, but we have to save over a pre-existing preset and I genuinely don't know why that is the case. It seems a bit of an oversight. But anyway, now you know how the envelopes work. And for our standard operators, operators A to F, the envelopes basically control operator amplitude. It controls amplitude for operator X as well, which is of course our noise operator. For operator Z, our envelope controls the filter cutoff. And this one here, P, this is our pitch envelope. And we can see this here on the bottom of our envelopes page, but we can also see it if we hit pitch down the bottom here. Pitch has its own special page, just like the operators. And the pitch envelope works in exactly the same way as our amplitude envelopes. We've got our attack here, we've got our sustain section, and we've got our release. And just like all the other envelopes, we can add as many points as we want. This envelope knob determines the extent to which pitch is affected by the envelope. And we can, if we wish, make any operator exempt from the pitch envelope. You see, this button here says pitch env. We can turn those off on any or all of our operators so that we can have some operators affected by the pitch envelope and others not affected. And that button is also present on our operators page here. One last thing I want to show you before we go and that is of course the key scale section because that's another whole bunch of useful envelopes. And what these envelopes are for is changing the amplitude of our operators depending on where on the keyboard they're played. So for example, if we go to E, the first thing you'll spot is that these are not quite as complex as our operator envelopes. You know, they haven't got a tempo sync or a sustain or anything like that. That's because these are not based on time, they're based on space. So rather than modulating the amplitude over a period of time, they vary the amplitude depending on where on the keyboard you're playing it. So if I pull down this corner here, now E will play a lot softer down the bottom end of the keyboard and a lot harder up the higher end of the keyboard. And we could reverse that, we could make it so that it was harder down the bottom and softer up the top. But just like our amplitude envelopes, we can change the curve, we can control click to add as many points as we want. So it really does afford us a lot of control. Z is the only one that's set to a slope by default when you create a new sound. That, of course, is our filter cutoff. This section below Z, this is our microtuning section. This is where, if we really want to, we can retune FM8 so that it plays on a different scale from the Western chromatic scale. So if I hold down a C, we can go pretty much as much as a semitone either way. So if we wanted to, we could do some completely mad tunings so that it's no longer like a Western chromatic scale. And there's an overall octave control as well. And there's a number of different presets you can try for different tunings around the world. And just like other templates, we can double click and change the name and we can save it over our blank user presets. In all honesty, I have to say, 
I never use this micro tuning section. I just always have it on, you know, the standard equal tempered Western chromatic scale. But I can see how if you were getting into world music and, you know, different tunings from around the world, this would be a very, very useful section. So now you know how to use envelopes, so have a play around, see what sort of mad modulating warping textures you can make. And I'll see you in the next video in which we're going to look at FM8's mod page and LFOs. So I'll see you in a bit.